All right. So now let's jump into arguably probably one of the more complicated sessions of this video series. And we're going to be getting into creating these buttons that create automatic actions and getting into a little bit of the scripting language deluge that I mentioned in previous videos. Before I get into the workflow stuff though, I kind of want to clean up the navigation that we've got going on here. There's a lot of extra components that we're not really using. And so in order to do that, we have a couple different options for design here. The first one is going to be to enable or disable certain sections from showing up. So for example, that calendar report, I already have it embedded in my dashboard. I don't need to see it as another list item on the left hand side. So I'm just going to uncheck that and it'll move over to hidden components. Same way offices, I'm not really using those so I can hide both of those components. Departments, I'm not really using those so I can hide both of those. It doesn't mean that that component is deleted. It's just not visible on the screen anymore and people can access it if you want to. If you embed it in a, in a dashboard, it'll still work. It's just not cluttering up your navigation bar. And maybe I'll move this dashboard section to the top because that's going to be our most popular one. And now we've just got the stuff that we really care about. Even employees, I'm not really even adding. So let's just get rid of that altogether. And also, if I want to add uh, icons to each one of these, I can. Here you can see that they kind of get added automatically. And so we don't really need to mess with those too much. And I'll click done. And so here you can see that this is going to be decluttered a lot. Employees is going to take me to the report, dashboard at the very top, and then I have two components under vacation requests. And I can also change the theme of the application as well. Um, there's a couple pre-made ones here if I want a bar at the top or maybe a different color. Uh, for example, if I pick this one, it'll give me a bar at the very top versus this one will give me a different kind of color theme on the left-hand side. I'll stick with the default though and close out. So now what are we trying to do here? We want to be able to build the application um, and have these custom buttons that will either approve or reject a vacation request that comes in. And so in order to do that, what we need to do is go over to our vacation request form and look at the report that was created. And now here we can go over and select the fields that we want to have displayed. And you know, these are just listed as a column on every single um, list report that we have. And so we're going to add a field, but it's a little misleading because we're actually adding a button if we scroll to the very bottom here. And so in order to add that button, we'll just click on this option here and it'll give us a little overlay. So now we've got to define our button that we want to create and let's call this my approve request. And now when do I want that button to be enabled? Well, I only really need it to be enabled whenever a vacation request is pending. So I'll put on a condition and I will select status equals pending. This way, there's no reason to have an approve button whenever the st status is already approved or already rejected. Only when it's pending does it need to appear. And I will also have it execute immediately and name the workflow. And let's just call this approve. And now I need to create a workflow. So here we get similar to the interface that we had when we were hiding and showing fields for that status field. I'll add an action. And the first action I want to do is data access. And here we can either add or delete a record if we want to, but we really just want to update the existing record with that status change. And so what form do we want to use? Vacation request. The current record is the one we want to change. And I'll come in here and click status equals approved and click save and done and create the button. And I'll take that button and I'll just drag it to the top. So it's the very first thing we see. And I'll go and click X here and we'll access the application. And from here, you can see that the approve request button appears. It's grayed out for the other three because they're either rejected or already approved. And now when I come in here and click approve, nothing really happens. It just changed that status to approved over here. And if I come over to my dashboard, I could see that Dwight's is now green here because it got approved before it was gray. And so we've got that approval going, but we really need to make this request form talk to the employee form in terms of taking out the vacation days that they've taken and also the ones that they have available for us the year so we need to do a little bit of math we need to do um, a little bit more complicated action and so we'll get into that here right now so let's edit this application again and we're going to come back here and edit this button and we're going to add a couple more actions to it so i'll click on the little edit icon up here and we will edit the workflow that was associated with it. And this time we're going to add a new action. And this time we don't really have an easy one. We're going to go into deluge script and we can choose to run a function. Don't worry about what a function is right now. We're just going to write our own custom one. So what we're looking at right now is our deluge script editor. 
it's arguably the most powerful screen in all of Creator because you can create very complex delete statements or the scariest if you're not so familiar with code. But we do our best to try to make it as easy as we can. And so the first step that I always go into writing code is writing out what it is we want to accomplish in plain English so we can execute those steps with scripting language in a few minutes. And so in order to write a comment in here, all you have to do is put a double slash and then write whatever you want to and the text will be gray. So what we really want to have happen here is two things. First, we need to uh, subtract the number of vacation days taken from the number of vacation days allowed. And the second thing we need to do is add the number of vacation days taken to the number of vacation days taken. Uh, maybe not vacation days taken, it should be vacation days requested that were that were were uh, approved. Okay, so this makes sense. And now in order to accomplish these two tasks, what we need to do is we need to be able to get information about the employee record that's related to this vacation request. And so in order to do that, we have a little action on the left hand side here called fetch records, which means we're going to get information about a related record in this application. In this case, the employee record. So I can drag and drop this over to the right hand side here. And I get this syntax assist area here that helps me kind of populate the script as we want to. For beginners, I highly suggest using this. As you get more comfortable, you'll learn to turn off the syntax assist altogether and you'll just start typing directly inside of here. Because this tutorial is meant to kind of teach you exactly how it does, go, works, I'm going to not use a syntax assist and dive directly into here. This did give us a sample of what it is we're trying to do here. So the first thing I need to do is set a variable. So a variable is gonna be basically a word that holds all of the information that we're going to use when we do this lookup here. And so what I'm gonna call this is my employee details. And then it says put a space and equal sign, and then it says a form. So I need the name of a form, which is gonna be the employee form that I had. And I know it's called employees, so if I just type in E, I get two things here. A big integer, which I'm not too sure about yet, we'll ignore that, but I do get this employees form. And so I can select that. And then it has some flat brackets, so I'll put two flat brackets, and then inside it says field operator expression. So what's happening here is I'm basically saying, let's look up this employees form, and I want to get a specific employee from that list of records that exist inside there. And so in order to do that, I can use this refer field section, and here we can see we've got our application, the form we wanna work with, as well as all the fields that exist in that form. Now, every single record that gets created inside of Creator is gonna have this magical ID associated with it. It's a very long string of numbers that's randomly generated for every single record, and it's how we identify each unique record from each other. Because if you have two vacation requests made by the same person for the same dates, um, you know, you need to be able to identify one from the other. So usually there's a unique identifier associated with it. So here, what I wanna do is I wanna look up the employees and I wanna say the ID from the employee is going to equal the ID from the vacation request, which is the employee field that we created. And I'll put a semicolon at the end because that's what we have here. And I've created my lookup field. Now, the next thing I need to do is establish how I can subtract the number of vacation days from the number of vacation days allowed. And so if I look at my employee form, I know that there's a field for vacation days available and vacation days taken. So I can reference these fields by using this variable that's gonna hold all the information about that record. And so in order to do that, I'm just gonna paste, oops, copy this and paste it here. And if I put a period, it's gonna show me all of the fields that exist within that employee's detail variable. So here I can say vacation days taken, and that's gonna equal, and it needs to equal the current amount of vacation days taken, so what it's already there, and we're gonna add the vacation days that were requested in that form, so vacation days off, and a semicolon to end that statement. And we gotta do something pretty similar in order to establish um, the value for, what do we have here? Vacation days available, right? So I'm just gonna copy and paste this entire line and 
paste it again, except this time it's going to be vacation days available is going to be the current amount of vacation days available minus the number of days taken off. So more or less kind of the same formula and I can make this a little bit more clear and copy and paste these over. So I can clean this up a little bit. And so we've got three steps here. We'll just rename them actually. And we've got looking up of an employee, then we have adding the number of vacation days and subtracting them from the amount they have available. I'll click save here. And that script got added, so I can just X out of here. Click done, click update, and it's been updated. So I can click X here. So let's go into access this application now. And all of these are already approved or rejected, so let's go ahead and add a new one. So here, let's pick somebody we haven't done yet. Let's say, Toby is taking some time off and he is taking time off from, let's say, next Wednesday to Friday. So that's going to be three days. Oops, three days. And I'll click submit. If I come over to my vacation request, I see Toby's requesting three vacation days, 27th to the 29th, status is pending. If I approve this request, the status gets moved to approved. So we've got that going for us. And now I need to come over here and look at employees and find Toby. So in order to find Toby, I'll just do a quick search here. And so here I can see that the numbers change from three days taken and 17 days available. He had 20 before. We'll just double check this with some math and maybe we'll create another vacation request for him. So we'll come back and make Toby again. And let's say he's doing something in November this time and from November 1st to November 5th. So that's going to be five days here. Click submit. Look at my vacation requests. I'm going to approve this one again. And now if I come over to my employees here, it's going to be eight vacation days taken, 12 available. And if I look over at my dashboard, this chart doesn't show Toby because he's not a salesperson. So I should have probably picked somebody who's going to show up in there. Let's pick Stanley. And let's say he's taken all of next week off. So five days are going away for him. Vacation request, another approval, employees, and I don't need to see that here anymore. I can see Stanley at the very top. He's taken five days. He has 25 available because he had a total of 30 earlier. And now here I can see that we've got five vacation days taken and 25 that are available. And if I come over here to my vacation request, and let me just actually duplicate this one. And I come back over to my dashboard. It did not run. And so the reason it didn't run is because that calculation of how many vacation days have been taken or not only happens whenever the button is clicked, not when the record is duplicated. So that's why we would probably hide the duplicate option from the available actions in the report settings instead of um, enabling someone to probably make a mistake like that by duplicating a request that wouldn't fire off the right workflows. The workflow is only being triggered when the request is approved. Now, the only other button we need to make here is going to be for rejecting a request. And that one's a lot simpler because when you reject a request, we don't need to do any math in terms of um, adding or subtracting the number of days taken off. So we'll just come back over to this report. We'll click add fields. We're going to make a new button at the bottom here. And this one is going to be called reject request on a condition of the status equals pending. Click done here and we'll call this reject. Create a workflow and this time we just need to do the data action again so we can select data access, update a record and it's going to be vacation requests, current record, status equals rejected and save. Click done and create. And this time I'll just drag this reject up at the top and X out of here and access the application. So now I've got all this stuff in here. I'm going to delete this duplicate that I created for Stanley unnecessarily. And we will add a new one in here. And let's say Dwight is taking some time off and it's going to be on Thursday and Friday. That's two days. 
click submit vacation requests i got both of these available now if i click reject both of them go away because only pending statuses will have anything and now that it's been rejected those vacation days nothing's happening if i come over to my dashboard here actually dwight will still show nothing because the request was rejected now it's probably good practice to make it so whenever those requests are approved or rejected we probably want to send an email as well so if i came over here and went over to this and modified that button again one more time clicked on that little pencil icon and edited the workflow i can add a third action in here and this could be simply sending an email maybe a text message something along those lines or redirecting them back to the dashboard or somewhere else and so actually let's do a redirect and let's say we want to take them to a page that page is going to be our dashboard and that's where we'll go after a record is approved and we'll also send an email and so a notification send mail it's going to go from the admin probably over to whoever was logged in and is filling out the request form i can give it a subject and say your request for vacation was approved and i can enter some text here if i want to and click save and that's pretty much it click done update close edit and let me add one last vacation request in here just so you can see the redirect let's say angel has taken monday off and only one day click submit vacation request i'm going to approve it and now it'll redirect me over to that dashboard and so you can see all these different uh, vacation requests that have been pumped in here angela is not a salesperson so she doesn't show up in this chart here um, but yeah that's how we created a button a bunch of workflow actions associated with it deluge details it can be overwhelming in the beginning but we'll do more and more video series that kind of do a deeper dive into learning how to master the language and then we customize the look and feel a little bit by cleaning up some of the clutter icons we don't need and aren't using thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we'll see you in the next one